Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about NIO packages in Java. Now let's first understand why why do we need this package and where will be using this package. Let's talk about the where first. You can use the NIO package to read from a file or write to a file. Now let's talk about the why because the obvious question will be that we already have the IO package in Java, right? Where you can where you can use the classes from that particular package to read from a file or write to a file. Then why do we need an, uh, an another package doing exactly the same thing as NIO? So the basic reason for launching the java.nio package was providing the multi-threading capabilities to the IO library. And we could not do this in the existing IO library because we had to probably rewrite and change the functionality of it. That's why Java created a new library called new package called java.nio package. And this package is basically, uh, I mean, if you, if you understand what NIO means here, generally as per the popular perception, it means non-blocking IO that you don't want to block your threads while you are reading to a file or writing to a file. Classically, NIO meant networking IO, but as per the popular perception, people know is know it as non-blocking IO. So the basic idea is because whenever you are read, reading a file or writing to a file, the thread gets blocked until the whole file is written or until the whole file is read. So the NIO package provides an improvement over that. It provides an improvement in a way that you can read the file into a different thread, but at the same time, move on to an another thread and write to a file. So you get this multi-threading capabilities and non-blocking capabilities out of the box from the classes provided by java.nio package. So that's the brief about this package. Now, some of the popular classes which you will be dealing with and some of the concepts which you need to know about uh, NIO package are buffers and channels. These, this is probably the core concept of the whole NIO package of how channels and buffers work. So let's say you are trying to read something, then the read operation will be happening from the channel into the buffer. And similarly, the write operation will be happening in the reverse way, which means to the channel from the buffer. So that's how the buffer and channel work together, that whenever you are trying to write something, you have to first open a channel, create a buffer, and then you can read from the channel into the buffer. And similarly, when you're writing to the buffer, you again have to go via the channel route. So channel is that route basically. Buffer is basically just a plain container for the data. And channel is basically representing the connection to the entities which are capable of performing the IO operation. So think of channels as, as a pipe, a, a, a channel literally basically. If you, if you understand the English meaning of channel, that's exactly what we mean by here, that it provides just a means to an end. It provides sort of a wire to the buffer. And then you also have selectors and selection keys classes, which together with selection channels work to provide the non-blocking IO functionality. There are some other APIs, uh, interesting APIs as well, like CareSet and some more, but I will not go into the detail of that because if you know about buffers and channels, and selectors, then we will be able to figure out what exactly we would like to do with this. I would also like to talk a bit more about the buffer class. So if you go to the buffer classes operations, the popular operations you will see there will be the read operation, which is for reading the files basically, or reading the content of the file. This works on the byte stream concept, first of all. So to read the bytes from the file, you will call the read method. There's also a very interesting method called flip, which I will be using which makes a buffer ready for the new sequence of operations. So once you have done something and you want to, let's say you read a particular file and you have come to the end of the file. Now you would like to reset the buffer and go back to the beginning of the file. Then you can use the flip method for that particular piece to, be, uh, to bring the current position back to the position, uh, to the zero index or to the starting of the file. So that's about read and flip and we will have a look at some of the other methods and there are a lot of interesting classes in this NIO package. Do read, uh, read about the documentation and check out the other methods as well to learn more about this package. But the basics are like I said, channels, buffers, some methods of the buffers and there's also a path class which is used to basically provide a particular path to a directory which I will not be covering in this example, but something good to know. So with that understanding, let's move to a, an, an example and understand how we can work around with this NIO package. So for that, I have prepared an example where I will be writing, uh, reading from a file and then writing to a file. So I have a main method here. The first section here basically is about reading from a file. 
and the second section is about writing to a file. So let's go through all of both of these sections one by one to understand what is happening. So in the read section, I use the file input stream class from the IO package. I'm still not using the paths class here just to show you that both two and both of them still can work together if you want to use the old constructs. So I use the same file input construct to read a file called source.txt, which is present at this particular location in my directory. And this source.txt has, has just a one line of text, nothing more. So I, I basically create the file input stream object and then I create a channel because we are dealing with files. So you create a file channel. If you're dealing with network socket, then you might have a socket channel. So that's also something which you need to know about that this NIO package is, is generic. It can be used for any kind of communication of reading and writing, not specifically to file handling. So we create a file channel object here by calling file input stream dot get channel. It's that simple. Once you call that, you will get a reference or the object basically of the file channel. Then the next thing is to create the buffer. Like I mentioned that channels and the buffer are the two main tools through which you work with an NIO uh, library. So we create a byte buffer and we allocate some starting size to it. Just some, some threshold size. So you can put it any number which you think is practical for your file and for your use case. Here I've put just 1024 bytes or one megabyte because my file is pretty small. So I just put that and initialize the read buffer and then I call read channel dot read operation. So the file channel object you created, you just call the read method on this particular channel and supply the buffer. And then it is going to read the file via the channel into the buffer and this read method is going to return a result to denote if the file was written successfully or not. I'm just printing, I'm printing a sys out here, just a bare bones sys out, nothing new here. So this section will be used to read a file. So let's see if, we, if I can read the file successfully and then we'll move to the right section. So I go to run as Java application. Yeah, uh, it says file read successfully and it read 27 bytes. It means that there were total of 27 bytes in my, in my file, uh, which had a single line of text. So it read all of that and it, it completed the execution. Now let's move to the right section and I can comment the read section because we have covered that. So here I'm again creating a file output stream object because I need to write something. So again, using the same construct of the IO package I have covered previously in the previous sessions. Once we have the file output stream object created, the next thing is to create a channel. So I, I again create a file channel, but this time it's the right channel. I again create a buffer, which is the right buffer, allocate some size to it. Then this is the string which I want to write to this particular file. So my file, my destination file will be called dest.txt will be present in this particular location. And this file should have this string written if this whole operation goes successfully. That's my end goal. So to do that, I say write buffer dot put and whatever string you have created, just call get bytes on it and you get a bytes representation of the whole string. So that's what I've done here because this put method ex expects byte because if you go inside this, it expects a byte array. So that's what I'm supplying here. I'm providing the uh, the bytes array by on the string by calling message dot get byte or any string object dot get bytes will get you a byte array. Once you've done that, then I'm calling the flip method. Remember I talked about this flip method to basically reset the index. That's something which you need to do in this particular case so that the index goes back to the initial position and the buffer can be written successfully to a file, uh, to a channel basically. So once the buffer is, uh, is, is com has completed its operation, then I can write the buffer to the channel. And once that is done, then if those if these operations went successfully, then I will see a file called dest.txt in this particular directory. Currently, there is no dest.txt in this directory. You can see there are just three files, but there is no dest.txt. So let's run this program. So it says file written successfully, which was the last sysout at line 28. But let's also see what is happening in the directory. So now I see a dest.txt popping up here. It's a 1KB file. And if I double click on this, I see the same string, which is which says this is a test string, which is the same string which I supplied here. So you can see, you can use the NIO packages to do the file read and write and much, much more than just read and write using the NIO package. But this is just to get, get the point across that this can be done using the NIO or the non-blocking IO package as well, so that you get maximum performance on your machine while you deal with file IO operations. So that's all I want to cover for this particular session. And in the next session, we are going to talk about an interesting concept called Java Beans.
If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you, and we'll meet again in the next session.